What's going on Giants fans back at it with another New York Giants video and in this video I want to talk about the week two loss to the Washington Commanders and what that means for Big Blue falling to 0-2 for the 10th time in the last 12 years since after Super Bowl 46. Folks before I get into this video if you're new to the channel and want to check out our content feel free to check us out and all of our social media content on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube at Big Blue Avenue. We appreciate everyone's support. And without further ado, let's get into this video. So, Giants coming off a rough 21 to 18 loss, uh, a game where they scored three touchdowns and the Commanders scored seven field goals. It was definitely tough to watch. Um, not having a kicker, Graham Gano got hurt early on in the game. I believe it was the opening kickoff, actually, pulled his hamstring, came into the game with a groin. Injury, definitely tough. Um, you know, Graham Gano is now placed on IR. So Jude McAtamney, who was not activated for week three, um, will get left on the practice squad as an international exemption, and they'll go ahead and sign kicker Greg Joseph. I'll get into him in a little bit. But for now, I want to ask folks, who do you think is to blame here? Personally? I think it's Brian Dable. Um, I did not like the way that this was handled at all. Um, he, he had two elevations and only 52 guys on the 53-man roster. Uh, use a roster spot on Ty Summers or Jude McAtamney, however you want to put it. Roll it and dice it. Elevate him from the practice squad. Look, we don't know exactly what the rules are. There might be something we don't know that they do. But at the same time, it looks really, really bad to know that you don't have any type of protection for your kicker, who was hurt, by the way, last year and is now 37 years old. Um, so, again, Giants lose 21-18. Um, Daniel Jones did not have a bad game, threw for two touchdown passes, his first two touchdown passes since before the ACL injury last year. 178 yards, had five rushes for 32 yards. He did still have some overthrows, but overall this is a very serviceable game for Daniel Jones. He played well enough uh, to help the Giants win. Unfortunately, you know, the Giants were held back a little bit, not just by their coaching and their uh, lack of special teams, but um, – Malik Neighbors with a costly drop. Despite his breakout game, that was definitely a play he would like to have back. Showing emotion on the sideline, that's okay. You know, he's a young kid, had 10 catches for 127 yards and a touchdown on 18 targets. Um, you can't really fault him too much for this. If the Giants had a place kicker, they would not have been in this situation. Um, but this kid is the real deal. I was very impressed with what I saw. I'll talk more about him on Big Blue Avenue, but 18 total targets was accounted for two-thirds of the Giants' passes, um, 66%. That's the highest target percentage by a player in any game in the past nine years, and Neighbors has just been that good. Um, 108 yards after the catch, you could watch him spin off of tackle attempts as he gets a first down and runs down the field for another 15 yards. Uh, really good IQ and awareness, separation, route running. I really like what I see all across the board from the league neighbors. It was literally just that one play uh, that was bad for him. But he's a rookie. He's going to learn. He's not the reason why we lost this game, in my personal opinion. It's Brian Dable and the coaching staff. Um, Devin Singletary. I thought was really, really good this week. Despite the one fumble that was punched out, that was not ideal. He is not the type of guy that's going to break away for a 70-yard run like Saquon did, but he is going to consistently get five to seven yards um, on first down if you have a good offensive line in front of you and going up you know, against a non-elite defensive line. That's who he is. Uh, in fact, Devin Singletary led the NFL among all running backs this past week, forcing 10 Missed tackles, his final stat line, 16 rushes for 95 yards and one touchdown. I like what I've seen from Devin Singletary so far as a New York football giant. You just want to make sure he shores up the football there. That definitely sucked. That was the only turnover of the game, and Washington did score points off that possession. And I just can't believe that the Giants were the first team in NFL history to score three touchdowns, not give up a touchdown, and not win the game. 
Um, first time that's ever happened in regulation. Incredible. Um, the offensive line wasn't bad overall. I thought they were serviceable. Um, Andrew Thomas did surrender a sack, but other than that, he was gold. Um, I thought John Michael Schmitz continues to look better. John Runyon and pass pro has been nice. Jermaine Illuminar, and they're really well coached by Carmen Brasillo. Um, and it allows Daniel Jones time. It allows him time to make decisions. It allows him to go past his first progression. Um, as I mentioned, Jones still had some overthrows, but at least he's having the time to throw the ball deep. And I think that's very important as you head into coming weeks of the season going up against good pass rushers like week three, you'll have Miles Garrett and company for the Cleveland Browns and JOK. So, yeah, I thought overall they were good. The real weakness for the Giants this week was the defense. Shane Bowen was hired because he specializes in run defense. Well, that was not the case in week two against Washington, folks. They couldn't get off the field. They surrendered over 200 rushing yards. Brian Robinson Jr. had 133 rushing yards on just 17 carries, averaging nearly eight yards per carry. And that took a lot of pressure off of rookie quarterback Jaden Daniels. And let, I'll be honest with you guys, the commanders do not have a good offensive line. They're not good. They overpaid for an average center in free agency. They have pedestrian tackles, you know, Andrew Wiley, Sam Cosme got hurt in this game. Their offensive line is not good. Um, they were seven of 14 on third down. That's inexcusable. And they totaled 425 yards of offense, and they held the ball for 37 minutes. If your time of possession is 37 minutes, you should be winning 90% of football games that you play, in, in my personal opinion. And despite all this, the Giants' defense still had five sacks. They had two from Jason Pinnock, one from Bobby Okereke, one from McFadden, and then one from Drew Phillips, who, by the way, I love Drew Phillips. 12 tackles, two for loss. He's not just the guy that's going to make tackles on deep and intermediate routes and open space. He's a guy that's going to snuff out the run and the backfield and beat receivers to those screen passes coming up from quarterbacks. Him and Deontay Banks looked pretty good, especially Phillips. Um, I thought Banks was better than last week. But to put this into perspective, Scary Terry McLaurin had just 22 yards on six catches. So this 2024 rookie class is contributing immediately I also liked what I saw from Tyler Newbin again for the most part. It was just that run defense, that first line outside of Dexter Lawrence is a problem. Rakeem Nunez, Rochez, DJ Davidson, um, they're not doing well. If you want to move the football against the Giants on the ground, take a page out of what Kevin O'Connell did. Run the football and go no huddle when Dexter Lawrence is off the field. Don't allow the Giants to substitute. It's been a problem. Um yeah, I mean, other than that, that's pretty much it for this um, week two game. Giants fall to 0-2, uh, not great. The Giants have made some moves so far this week with Graham Gano being hurt. They signed veteran kicker Greg Joseph off the Lions practice squad, seven-year vet. Did not play in 2023, uh, 2020, pardon, but over the past three seasons, he's looked really good for the Minnesota Vikings. He's been their kicker. Um, 26 of 33 field goals last year. That is, isn't a great percentage, but he's hitting deep ones, which is good. Uh, played for the Titans in 2019, played for the Browns in 2018, and he holds the NFL record for five game-winning kicks in a season. He also led the NFL in touchback percentage in 2021. He's a 30-year-old kicker from South Africa. I'm very excited to see what he brings to the table. Um, you know, Graham Gano headed to IR. He'll miss at least the next four weeks. And this is the second IR stint for Graham Gano in the past two seasons. So hopefully Greg Joseph can supply the Giants with some points this upcoming week. Um, in other news, the Giants also poached a player off of the Eagles practice squad in linebacker Patrick Johnson. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what he brings to the table. 2021 seventh round draft pick. We know the Giants are battling. Injury issues right now, Darius Muisau, um banged up, didn't play last week. Carter Coughlin and Matt Adams both on IR still. And um, after Bobby Okereke and Micah McFadden, it gets very, very thin. You're talking about Ty Summers and Isaiah Simmons. So they want to get some depth there. He spent the last four seasons with Philadelphia. In fact, he played in their season opener against Green Bay as he was elevated from the practice squad and 
Through 49 games for the Eagles, he's got two starts, 35 tackles, one for loss, three QB hits, a forced fumble, and a recovery. He's a 26-year-old veteran, 6'2", 248. Not a bad build for a linebacker, although I expect him to play more on the outside than the inside if he does get any defensive snaps at all. It seems like this is purely a special team signing in a Carter Coughlin replacement uh, to pair in there with Ty Summers because the last few years, the last four years, it's been Cam Brown and Carter Coughlin as two linebackers designated spots just for special teams. They let Cam Brown walk in the offseason to the Miami Dolphins. They replaced him with Matt Adams. He went on IR. They get Ty Summers. Carter Coughlin goes down. So now it's Ty Summers and nobody. So with Simmons and Muasau being more active roster guys um, and Muasau being hurt, they have to make this move for Patrick Johnson. I think it's a solid move for the short term. So Greg Joseph and Patrick Johnson are the newest New York football giants in a week where they desperately need a win coming up against the Cleveland Browns. 0-2, bad coaching, bad quarterback play, bad run stopping, you name it. Got to make sure you don't drop passes and turn the ball over either. Um, although I will say, even though I did say bad quarterback play, Daniel Jones wasn't bad last week. He was awful in week one. He missed a couple throws in week two. To me, that constitutes for a below average quarterback in the NFL. Although this past week, he definitely played above average. The problem is, can he do that against a team not named the Washington Commanders? Folks, let me know what you think about this video. Smash that like button, subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. Check us out on all of our social media, scrolling across our ticker below. And without further ado, let's go big blue.